And joining us now is Rabbi Dov Lipman, former Knesset member and founder and CEO of Yad Leolim. Rabbi Lipman, thank you for joining. I'd like to discuss the current draft law. We have many international viewers who don't quite understand the source of conflict in this country as this is an internal issue. Could you pre briefly explain what is this law? Why is it being renewed and why the conflict? Absolutely. So Israel has a mandatory draft law which says that every person when they turn 18, they must serve in the military. But going back uh, 75 years ago when the state was founded, there were religious communities that felt that they needed to have scholars who were during these years, especially of ages 18 to 22, 25, that they would be immersed and studying religious texts, become the future rabbis and spiritual leaders of the country. So way, way back, David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister, made a deal with the rabbinic leadership that there could be a few hundred young men who would get military exemptions so that they could study the Torah, the holy texts. Uh, but over the course of 75 years, those few hundred have now become over 70,000 young men that every single year are being exempt. And people have petitioned to the high court in Israel saying, this is unfair. There's a lack of equality here. Why should one population be serving in the military and others aren't? And for years, the Supreme Court in Israel has been requiring the Knesset to pass some kind of legislation that provides equality. It might not be drafting all of the ultra-Orthodox young men, but certainly higher numbers than we have at the moment. I'll just add, the recent war and the war we're involved with right now has really exasperated the problem because we see that there is a lack of manpower in the army. We do see a need for more soldiers. So that has increased public pressure to try to get the Knesset to actually come to some kind of legislation that suffices the criteria of the court. That's a great explanation. Thank you. There seems to be a crisis in the coalition now over the renewal of this law. How do you foresee that this will impact the government and the political arena? So first of all, just to explain the crisis very briefly, the court required by today that there be a solution in place or else April 1st, there will be a mandatory draft of every single young man, even those who are studying in the rabbinic seminaries, which would lead to a colossal uh, collision of communities and, and a, an internal uh, crisis within Israel that we haven't seen uh, really since the state was founded. This is a much bigger one than even judicial reform would be. The government has not come to a solution, so it asked for 24 more hours to come to one. Uh, if they don't come to one, which suffices the court, and there will be a mandatory draft, the ultra-Orthodox parties will pull out of the government. That means that Netanyahu no longer has a governing majority, which means either he has to quickly put together some kind of an emergency government or elections will be called. So for everyone watching overseas, uh, in the midst of this war against Hamas, we have, have an internal crisis, which absolutely, if no solution is found, could lead to the toppling of the government and the initiation of new elections in Israel. Wow. <laughs> Now, you've been involved with integration of the ultra-Orthodox sector into the workplace and the army for over a decade. Do you believe that the Haredi population could actually be prompted to serve in the army or in national service? Is there anything that can be done to engage them towards this direction? I love the way you asked the question because you asked about the ultra-Orthodox population. I do believe that on a street level, if people were presented with options, some for military service, some for national service, let's remember in the ultra-Orthodox population, there are already many, many volunteers in the areas of Magen David Adom and Hatsala and Zaka, organizations that are playing a vital role even in this war itself, find ways for them to serve where it won't be in the army. Let me just explain for a moment, the concern about the army is you're taking them out of their religious institutions and now all of a sudden they're thrust at a very young age suddenly into secular society, that's where the fear lies. So first of all, presenting other options for national service, but also in the military. We've worked hard to create units that are exclusively for the ultra-Orthodox, where they have study sessions every day and prayer sessions every day, and their sensitivity to the religious needs. So I do believe working with the population, there are solutions that can be found. One of the problems is the political leadership, which seems to 
see their role as preserving the old way that things have been done and not willing to show any kind of compromise on this issue. So I do believe the population is open to it. I believe even many of the politicians are now open to it. We're going to have to see what happens over the course of the next few days and see if a solution can be found or are we going to actually have a, a collapse of the government and a, a crisis in terms of going to elections during wartime, which everyone wants to avoid. Absolutely. Rabbi Lipman, thank you so much for your analysis today. Thank you so much for having me.